This is the Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Entz, hosted by Jeremy Jorgensen and presented by Gate City Bank. Well, North Dakota State raised the national championship banner one more time this weekend. The crowd roared, and then the Bison stomped UND. It was a thorough dismantling. Joining me on the set is head coach Matt Entz. We're going to talk about the game a little bit, but uh, let's talk about the week of preparation. It was the first time you'd had one week to prepare for an opponent, which was different than Butler, where you had the whole summer. How'd the guys handle all that? Well, it was good. I mean, everything's on a, a, a much more urgent tempo, of course, uh, when you only have four days to prepare. Uh, and you're trying to use every minute of the day that you can with the kids, especially in the afternoon. Uh, but it was our first full week of morning special teams meetings, afternoon position meetings and practice. But I thought our kids did a, a good job. We have so many young men that really haven't experienced what a full game week is like, so it was good to get one under our belt. Let's roll the tape. Uh, the crowd had a little bit of a buzz to it, didn't it? Uh, it Bison Nation was roaring. It, it was. It was fun to be back in the... In the friendly confines of the dome. What was that first tunnel walk like? Pretty cool? It, it was really, really neat. <laughs> yeah, that never gets old, there's no question. UND won the toss, they deferred, so Trey Lance was trying some deep balls early, wasn't he? We, we did, we went back-to-back uh, -back, uh, shots, and this is the second one to Zach Mathis, uh, a young receiver for us that's really started to elevate his game. When you start on offense, it's, it's big to get points early. Well, it sets the uh, stage for the rest of the day, and I think probably you can get after their defense a little bit and make them get on their heels. 7 nothing early, and how good is Jabril Cox covering the flat? Well, he's a special athlete. It's, it's, it's difficult to block him in space because of his length, but then he has such great closing speed and the ability to tackle in space. You know, on defense, did you expect them to blitz much? They blitzed a little bit early. They'll bring five on this play right here. Well, we'd seen that they would you double hard cover one. They would uh, bring some different pressures. And we knew that they weren't going to let Trey sit back there and pat the football. You know, they were trying to throw it a little bit early. They were trying to loosen up the run. What would you think of their play calling early? Well, you know, a lot of the same things we had seen the, the week prior against Drake. And so we felt like we had a good plan going into it. Too much pressure, though. They only got six plays here, 13 yards. They just uh, had a lot of traffic in the middle. They did. It was a great job by Jackson Hankey, what we call our three-bender player, but would have loved to have seen Michael come down with that pick. You know, Ben Ellison, it was great to have him back in the lineup. Well, when you have one of your captains back and playing and making plays for us, uh, it's a motivational lift for the rest of the team. You know, Trey Lance, when he tucks it, he can really scoot, can he? He can, and that's one of the things we've challenged him with is, is rather than trying to go to your third option, tuck it and, and, and get positive yards, keep moving the chains. Got out of bounds there, too. That was good. On this drive, he had three carries, 31 yards, finished it, too. He, he did a great job of getting in. And our quarterback run game so valuable in the red zone for us. Did you expect them uh, to run much Wildcat or run many trick plays? This is a little Wildcat option here. We, we'd seen one. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we had known that the Boltman, uh, uh, the young man, had done some Wildcat in previous years, so had been ready for it. This is just a missed tackle, unfortunately. Uh, it, 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 this series kind of turned into, a, I believe it was a touchdown for us. We lost the cup right here. That'll be something that we'll have to address uh, early Monday. You know, Marquise Bridges is really, really athletic, and this is their good drive, but he made an awesome play here. What a great break, and oh. uh, time, he's, he's really separating himself as one of the, the top corners, I think, in FCS football. You know, uh, getting off the field on third down was the problem on this drive, wasn't it? it was, this was two, a third and 14. There was two of them. There was yeah. a third and seven, uh, and then this third and 14, and, and just, we, we got to have a better sense of urgency and, and put our kids in a situation to be successful. Now the Fargo South kid finishes it off here, Johannesson, he is a powerful back. He's a big back, yeah, and we, we tried to do some things when he was in the game versus when he wasn't. 14-7 at this point, so it's important to answer here, and you do put a great drive together, a little fly sweep. Uh, great job, and, and what I liked is it, it's a different player carrying the football in the fly sweep now. Uh, you, you can't just get locked in on, on one receiver or one back carrying the ball. You know, this run here by Trey Lance, it's so awesome, his footwork and so impressive on the sideline. It is. Uh, he continues to use his blockers. Uh, you know, of course, you know, we don't like to see our quarterback taking all those hits, but again, you know, 20, 25 yards is big for us. How about this little play? It's a little Tim Tebow jump pass. Well, like I said earlier, in the red zone, we're able to use that quarterback run game, and it sets up plays like this with a wide hit. Yeah, these tight ends are catching touchdowns. There's no question about that. The last five minutes of the first half, uh, Code Green really did a nice job. We did. You know, I, I think the kids understood that the, the previous scoring drive they had was we didn't play our best, and we needed to continue to, to get better. 21-7 uh, at halftime right there. Third down conversions were big. UND got a lot of those on that one drive. The Bison were 6 of 8 on third down. Time of possession, 18-11. to 11. That would be a story of the game as we uh, head into the second half as well. Before we go to the second half, though, let's get to know Ben Ellison a little bit. 
This is Would You Rather with the 2019 Bison, presented by Gate City Bank. Would you rather go fishing or hunting? Fishing. Would you rather go skydiving or cliff diving? In the water? Yeah. I think cliff diving would be pretty fun. Okay. Yeah. Would you rather go camping or stay in a hotel? Stay in a hotel. Would you rather shovel snow or swat mosquitoes? Uh, shovel snow. <laughs> I, that's the reason I, want, I don't want to go camping. <laughs> <laughs> would you rather swim in a pool or a lake? Lake. Would you rather drive or fly when you're going somewhere? Fly. Faster. Would you rather walk 10 miles or go to the dentist? Dentist. <laughs> would you rather bite your tongue while eating something or step on a Lego? Uh, bite my tongue. Those Legos are, are nasty. <laughs> yep. Would you rather sit on a beach or a cruise ship? Beach. Would you rather confront an alligator or a bear? The alligator, I think. <laughs> would you rather be thirsty or hungry? Hungry. Would you rather sit in a tractor all day or an office? The both of them are no-goes. Uh, <laughs> probably a tractor, at least you're outside. Okay. Would you rather watch a movie at home or go to the theater? At home. Would you rather drink coffee in the morning or juice? Coffee. Would you rather own a fancy house or a fancy vehicle? Fancy house. Coach, still just a two-possession game at halftime. What was the message in the locker room? Well, the big one defensively was we needed to do a better job on third down. Uh, those two third and longs that we gave up in that scoring drive were you know, frustrating not only to myself but the entire team. And then offensively, I wanted them to continue to be patient with, with the play calling. And, you know, we, we talked all week that those runs of two or three yards early were going to turn into five, six, seven, eight yards later in the game. And, and just to be consistent, continue to do what they needed to do to be successful. That's exactly what happened. As we take a look at the second half here, you know, there wasn't a lot of takeaways. It was a pretty clean game. Uh, but when you do get a takeaway, it's big, isn't it? And you got one early here. Oh, we did. We, we, we were able to get some pressure on, uh, on Zimmerman, and they threw the ball up, and, and Michael did a nice job of making the catch and, and, and getting some yards and putting us in a real good field position. You know, when you get a turnover, you want to cash in at least with three or seven. You get a nice run here, and you're going to get a field goal out of this drive, and that was important to answer. Oh, it was. Anytime you can turn, uh, you know, takeaways into, po into points is big. Of course, you, our expectations is touchdowns. Yep. Yep, 24-7. Uh, what, what do you think of the kicking game right now? It's uh, you, looking okay. You know, Griffin Cross has done an outstanding yeah. job. They're coming into the season as the number two uh, with, with Jake getting a little banged up and coming in and being really efficient. You know, Marquise Bridges, you can do a lot with that kid. We, we did here. We brought him off the edge. They're giving us a lot of single width formation, and he has great speed and closing speed and does nice jobs at the tackle. You know, the running backs and fullbacks, even Garrett Malstrom caught some balls, but they were catching balls out of the backfield in this one. You know, uh, Trey did a great job of uh, spreading the ball around to everyone. Nine different, nine different offensive players had catches yesterday. Yeah, five balls by the backs and fullbacks. That's great. Adam Colfield had a nice second half. I thought Adam Colfield ran extremely hard in the second half, and here you see him catching the football out of the backfield. Really valuable young man. Noah Gindorf, he found the end zone in game one, and boy, he just has guys bouncing off of him again here. He's a big physical presence and uh, has great speed, great athleticism, uh, and it's exciting to see those tight ends continue to score. Yeah, no doubt. It's 31-7, so you're getting some separation now on UND, and uh, that, that gives the defense a chance to pin their ears back a little bit and get in the backfield here. Well, we did. We made him a little bit more one-dimensional, and uh, here you can see Derek Tuska uh, kind of you know, working to quarterback level and coming back underneath with the sack and being able to get off the field. So this is the fourth quarter now, and this is where what you talked about. Those three-yard runs started to turn into eight, nine-yard runs. There's a sequence here of a six-yard run, ten-yard run, nine-yard run. You're leaning on them now. We were. We were, and a lot of that goes back to the Rams. And here, I think this is a part of about a three-play sequence where we ran the exact same play, three plays in a row, and, and just trying to really wear that defensive line out. Kobe Johnson has a little bit of it factor, doesn't he? He, he does. He has yeah. great vision, great balance, and, and, and he runs much bigger than what he might look. This was a fourth and six play, not an easy throw, but great calmness by Trey. I loved it. Uh, I wanted to put guys in this situation, you know, and, and for Christian Watson to make the catch and, and understand I still got to get that first down. You know, Trey Lance is really reading plays well, isn't he? He has some options here. He is. Here, he made the correct read and was able to hit this thing off the backside, uh, uh, untouched for a touchdown. Well, James Hendricks had to leave the game, so that's an opportunity for someone else. This is a next man up program, and Dawson Weber was the next man up, and he did some nice things. He did. He came in. He's done a great job of being a student under James, uh, seeing how James uh, you know, attacks the game plan and, and, and his approach to the game. So excited for where Dawson's at. 
You know, the defense just creates chaos uh, against UND in the second half here, and Michael Tutsi is the benefactor again. He was, uh, you know, a mere hand drill. Uh, Jake Kava from yeah. uh, Shanley here getting a, a ball knocked up in the air and, and Michael Tutsi being at the right place at the right time. Sabian Clark's another young back, and uh, he's really good between the tackles. He is. We, we continue to work with Sabian on keeping his pads out and running with great pad level, and here's a great example. of When he does that, uh, he's not going to get tackled for loss. No doubt about it. The final score, there it is. Uh, you meet uh, Coach Swigert at the midfield there, 38-7 on our NODAC Insurance Final Stats Board. And I think a couple key stats here. The rush yards, 68 for UND, 266 for the Bison in the time of possession. The Bison really grounded it out in the second half there. Let's hear what the players had to say after the game. It was a lot of relief, you know, just being back, um, being able to go out there again. Um, it's pretty special, you know, um, especially when you can do it in front of our fans, in front of, uh, and to be playing against, um, you know, UND. Um, it's pretty special, pretty, uh, pretty exciting game. So, I mean, I was just telling Trey at the end of the game, I was like, we got more front looks and more stems and more games between Butler and UND than we have all last season. So, for Trey to only what was it, two sacks today or something like that, for Trey to only call it get two uh, sack twice today, it's just it's amazing the way he comes around and. Like you said, I mean, the dynamic he brings to running the ball, I mean, he runs like a deer out there. It's uh, fun to watch him run. So. Uh, they gave us a lot of stuff. You know, maybe we didn't prepare for it as well. You know, just didn't expect uh, to see that much. But uh, I think they, they're a really good team. Uh, so, you know, I think I did a decent job of making plays. Uh, our guys did a great job of getting up and down field and obviously up front. Uh, again, the offensive line dominated. Um, I don't think there was any extra hype that we, we felt or any extra pressure, you know. Um, it was a big game for the state of North Dakota, you know, for, for Bison fans um, and for former players, but I don't think there was any added pressure to, to us. Oh, great comments by the players. We certainly could have picked Trey Lance a second week in a row for the NODAC Insurance Player of the Game, but Co Green stepped up big in this one. The Player of the Game, presented by NODAC Insurance Company. Roll with his partner James Hendricks sideline with a concussion and Tutsi stepped up with two interceptions nearly had a third he tied for the team lead in tackles was part of a tackle for loss as well preparation where I'm ready I prepare for this you know uh, beginning of the game maybe a little little jittery but once I let it sink in you know just go out and play football that's that's what we do here so it, it made it really easy what do you like about Tutsi he's a uh, he He's a son of a, of a college football coach. Okay. He understands the preparation that needs to go into it. He has a great understanding of the, the game of football and leverage and, and schemes and spacing. Uh, he's going to continue to get better. And, and uh, being able to, to work underneath guys like James Hendricks and, and Robbie Grimsley a year ago has only helped Michael in his transition to becoming the full-time starter. Well, James Hendricks did uh, take some contact. I suppose it's a wait-and-see situation with James. It is. We'll find out more tomorrow once we, we get our medical staff in and get a better chance to evaluate him. You know, there was a lot of guys moving around on defense in this game. Uh, you men mentioned uh, Jay Kava. Um, James Kayser played a little bit of linebacker. We're going to look at some of the plays here. thought he did a really nice job. He has a nose for the football. He, he does. He, he's a great football player. We need to find ways to get our best 11 per situation on the football field and here's a couple examples of him understanding run fits uh, he, he's a super intelligent player and uh, we, we just got to again continue to challenge him to to, to get better but he's also uh, doing a great job at the safety position as well yeah what's different about being in the box too when you're a safety and you get moved up closer to the ball it's a little different up there well I think things just happen a little bit quicker uh, yeah. those linemen are on you a little bit faster yeah. and so you have to be able to shed blocks more than you might have to at a safety position. Well, I thought the play calling was fantastic uh, in this football game, and I thought there were some nice little wrinkles from Tyler Roll, and we're going to look at one of them right here. Those tight ends, the three big tight ends, all in the game at the same time. It forced a timeout for UND. Yeah, great creativity and uh, something else to prepare for for opponents. No doubt. You know, when, when you have big skill kids like this that can go catch the football and they can stretch the field it does a lot for you but you know i'm sure und hadn't seen 13 personnel out there and all of a sudden uh, you know you see they only have three down linemen in the game I'm, I'm sure they were nervous about here comes heavy run game at us yeah the bison had 10 in the box there und had nine so that was a problem forced a timeout and got them thinking a little bit and those tight ends are versatile you can do a lot with those guys we have we have you seen them you know take seam routes down the middle of the field uh, an integral part of our run game and so i can expect 
can continue to see those guys doing a lot as the year progresses. Yeah, no doubt. Great job by Coach Roll on that formation right there, forcing a timeout. Well, there's an interesting story with Bartholomew Ogbu. What a great story he is. Some of you may have heard it. We'll go a little more in depth with how he ended up at NDSU. Stay with us. It has been quite a road for Bison defensive end Bartholomew Ogbu. He went to high school in Bismarck, but the path from Nigeria had its challenges along the way. But this is a young man with a great character. There's, there's clo those close to him in Bismarck found that out real quick. Today's Bison football feature story is presented by Olaf Anderson Construction. Bartholomew Ogbu is in his second season with North Dakota State. In 2014, he was reaching out to educators and ministries in the United States to escape the political and economic strife of his home country of Nigeria. We had a little issues with uh, the Boko Haram issue during 2014 area. So my parents thought that uh, coming to America to, you know, to, go to have an education is the best thing for me at that moment. After reaching out, he connected with Morgan Fornis, who was the superintendent of Shiloh Christian School in Bismarck. Uh, initially, my admissions uh, director came to me and said, we've had a unique request. We received uh, an email inquiry from a 16 or a 15 year old at that time uh, looking for uh, the, some admissions opportunities. And he went through the process of getting to the United States. I got into a flight and my friend tells, tells me goodbye and uh, you know, came over to the United States, and that was the first time I ever been on the plane, but uh, I was the only one I came over from Nigeria. Once in the U.S., Bartholomew began to get accustomed to the culture of North Dakota. Most surprising thing the first thing I got my was seeing the, you know, the snow, because I came in in December, December 2nd, and there was snow all over everywhere, and it was too cold for me. After getting over the initial shock of the weather, Ogbu got involved in sports. But had never played any organized sport, uh, even though many others thought otherwise <laughs> but uh, he had never played organized sports he was a skilled basketball player and with the urging of Fornis and the coach at shiloh christian they convinced bartholomew to try out for football and of course he thought football was soccer mm -hmm. and uh, i took him to meet the football coach ogbu started on the jv team learning the game and as a junior started to get reps on varsity by his senior year colleges started to notice him you know, they, they said, you know, I think I can play in the next level. And I'm like, wow, I don't know. I have to talk to my coach about this. His coach and Fornis told him to listen to the opportunities. And North Dakota State was one of the schools. Fornis was there to explain Bartholomew's story to the coaches interested. I did say, if you're looking for a young man who is the real deal in terms of uh, a, a young man who has perseverance and a work ethic and a value system, that uh, embodies what I think North Dakota State is all about. I said, I think you've got the guy. No, I, I, I mean, I've never dreamed of, about this, you know, this before. I mean, especially, you know, being part of a great culture like North Dakota State. You know, every time you put on a jersey and you're running out there, you're representing a lot of guys that have come through this program, and, and that's just special to me. I would give everything you know, in the world to have this, this opportunity. For the Bison Football Show, I'm Alex Egan. Coach, what a story he is, and uh, he's playing a lot right now. He is. He's a valuable part of Code Green right now, and I only continue, or I only believe he's going to continue to get better. He, you, you, you go back and think he's only played football for about four or five years, and uh, uh, as the game continues to slow down, he'll become a bigger and bigger part, play a bigger role for us. You know, the athleticism that he has is, is there, though, isn't it? Uh, oh, the foundation's there. Definitely. It is. A yeah. big, physical, strong kid that can run and change direction. Uh, Coach Buda Williams does an outstanding job with Barty and all the defensive ends. And he's the character of this kid. He's a nice kid, too, isn't he? I, I'm sure the other players really like him. He is a, well, if there's favorites within the locker room, yeah. Barty's probably one of them. And uh, uh, it's always fun. The days he gets to run the radio, he'll, he'll put on some, you know, some of his African music. And, uh, boy, he, big smile on his face, <laughs> and the guys love it. Oh, that's great. It's great to have him in the program. Well, the future crop of Bison takes us to the defensive line this week. That group has a couple of really solid true freshmen. The Future Crop of Bison, presented by Peterson Farms Seed. Reed Ryan was the Defensive Player of the Year in the state of Wisconsin. He was a standout wrestler, has a great frame on him. Ryan visited Notre Dame, had some FBS offers, yet he has a great understanding of what this first year is all about. Really just from hearing the, from the coaches and like other past players or upperclassmen, is your role freshman year is, I would say, you just run the scout team, you take as much advantage as you can running the scout team as you can and really take that as working on your craft and like you're going against college offensive linemen who have been here two, three, four years. 
You know, that is a really big part of it. You think of a young defensive end like that, and in practice, he's going up against Dylan Radons and Cordell Volson. I mean, some big physical guys. There's an adjustment period there. Oh, there is. You're, you're going against uh, guys who are at the, the peak of their career, and you're 18 years old, and so it's, uh, it's an eye-opener when you first show up. But uh, I, I think you know, sh iron sharpens iron, and these young guys having the opportunity to go against some of the best football players in FCS football only helps them in the transition and when they have their opportunity they really take advantage of it. What are some of the things you like about Reed that you've seen so far? Big strong physical kid, uh, you know, some of that comes back to his wrestling days, yeah. plays with great pad level, uh, again I think that that's just a lot of wrestlers you see that when they make the transition to college football uh, they have a good base and so uh, I, I think he's going to continue to improve and again Coach Williams does an outstanding job with that group. Yeah, and it's not easy to play early on the defensive line, is it? That's no. a position that takes some time. No, it's not. Just the, the, the size difference from being a junior or a senior to when you're 18 years old, uh, it's difficult. You know, we've had a few, you know, Greg yep. Menard played early, but, yep. but played sparingly and played more as the year progressed. Uh, it, it is a difficult position to play. Well, we're heading out east this week. The Delaware Blue Hens and the Bison will lock horns this week. We'll talk about it. Stay with us. Well, in our look ahead, it's the uh, Delaware Blue Hens. You see the helmet right here. And what do we know about the Blue Hens? We played them last year, which mm -hmm. will probably help. Yeah, it, it definitely will. I know they have a new offensive coordinator this year, so we'll have a couple games under the, his belt. At least we can uh, start to look at some game film today. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, quarterbacks come returner. Uh, a good, solid CAA program, so we're going to have to be ready to go. And as I told the guys uh, yesterday in the locker room after the game, uh, big challenge going on the road. Yeah, the Bison have been very, very good in true road games. We haven't been this far out east. Uh, this will be a, a new adventure for all of us. NBC North Dakota will have the game back to North Dakota for you. Uh, outside the area, there's some other options. Uh, Flow Sports Football, uh, NBC uh, Philadelphia, NBC Washington. Uh, there's certainly plenty of options, and the Bison Radio Network will be fired up as well. Have a great week, everyone. The Bison are 2-0. Go, Bison! Go, Bison!